الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الكريم وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله um, my topic has to do with raising iman and um, increasing iman and all these different um, issues that would involve the higher status of an iman alhamdulillah first of all i have to ask a question because many people will, will you know we we have these titles and these topics and we really don't know the meaning of the words involved so what is iman first of all <laughs> what is iman oh my goodness brisbane Canberra, sorry, I'm in the wrong city. What is Iman, brother? No, they know. <laughs> they know? Yeah, they know. They sure? Go ahead, what is Iman? Someone, anyone. It's not the model, by the way. Don't don't mention her. What's Okay, mashallah, we have a lot of work to cover in the thirty minutes that I'm supposed to be here. <laughs> Iman is a belief in the heart, first of all. The belief in the heart in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in His angels, in His prophets, in His books, in Yawm Al-Akhir, and in Qadr. The belief starts in the heart. So when the people tell you that Islam is in their heart, they're actually right. That's where it starts. A lot of times we say that to justify not practicing. We say, well, brother, Islam is in my heart. We shouldn't actually ridicule these people because they're actually right to begin with. Islam is in their heart. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Now, Iman is also the action or a statement on the tongue. So when you say that Iman is in your heart, we have to ask you, so what do you believe in? And if you say that, Shadu Allah ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lah, that you believe that there is nothing worthy of worship besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is one, unique in his oneness and has no partners. And you further bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is Allah's last messenger and seal of all prophets. Then you have that statement which is on the tongue. But it is also a third thing. The third thing is that it is action on the limbs. This is the part where a lot of us kind of, you know, we fall uh, apart when it comes to this to this statement of Iman. Because the Bani Israel, they used to say what? Sami'na wa asayna. Alright? The Sahaba, they say, or used to say, Sami'na wa ta'na. Even Allah quoted them as saying that. But us... We just say Sami'na. And that's it. We don't rebel, but we don't obey. We just say Sami'na. Khalas. End of story. And my brother Yusha Evans is actually the one who taught me that. And I think he actually said it here in this place. Sami'na. Faqat. Sami'na. End of story. But it is also the action on the limbs. And I don't know of another surah that speaks about this issue other than, in, in a better way than Surah Al Asr. Imam Shafi'i rahimahullah said that if Surah Al-Asr was the only Surah revealed, that it would be sufficient to guide everybody, to guide all of mankind. It would be that would be enough as a guidance for us. Well, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala said, and he he bear witness and he swore by Al-Asr by time itself. Now, time is a very interesting and very expensive, yet very misused commodity. We will check the values of currencies, some of us daily. We will check the value of gold, we will check the value of silver, but time is priceless. Time is something that never returns. It will never be today again. It will never be this date. What is it? 24th. It will, ne it will never be, I'm on tour, I don't know what, even what date it is. It will never be the 24th of May again. 2013 or 1434 it will never be that again ever 
So before we sleep, we should be asking ourselves, what have we done with this day? These 24 expiated, or these 24 hours that are gone, that are completely gone. Because we don't know if there are five minutes left for us. We don't know if there are five seconds left for us. The ulama used to say, when you give salam to the right shoulder, don't expect to give it to the left shoulder. And Allah wanted to magnify the status of time by bearing witness to by it, swearing by time. And Allah doesn't have to swear by anything. Allah is sufficient as a witness. He doesn't have to swear by anything. Us, we swear by Allah and it becomes part of the Part of the, just the dialogues. Wallahi, everything is wallahi. Yes, did you, brother, did you eat today? Wallahi, yes. How are you? Wallahi, alhamdulillah. Did you pray, what time did you wake up? Wallahi, 8 o'clock. Wallahi, the traffic is, and wallahi, very bad. And we do this constantly. Without having to do so. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, bear witness by time. Inna al-insana lafi khusr. That every single human being, all of us, every single one of us is in a state of loss. If you lose your property, you would be irate, upset. You would take people to court. You would try to find out who took your property away. You would, you would maybe cry. Some people who lost their wealth and their property in the 1920s and 30s actually killed themselves because of the Great Depression in North America. This is something that people killed themselves because they lost their properties. And it would be a great loss. If you lost your children, it would be a tremendous loss. You love your children. They are a part of you walking around on earth. They are a part of you. They are little yous walking around. If you lost your life, that would be a tremendous loss. But there is no greater loss... There is, and I need you to listen to me when I say this, there is no greater loss than the loss of Iman. There is no greater loss than that. Because if we if we lost our Iman, then we are just basically summun bukmun umyum fahum la that we are deaf, dumb, and blind walking around on earth. The good news about that is that Iman is something that can be attained again. It can be, it can be raised up as long as you are above the ground. As long as you are alive, your Iman can be raised up. Because Allah didn't stop there. He said, insana la fi khus illa amanu. Except for those people who have Iman. Except for those people who have the belief in the heart, a statement on the tongue, and actions on the limbs, except for them. Everyone else is in loss, except for them. The beauty is that the door is open for everybody. The same way that all of humanity is in loss, the same way that they can also attain this Iman. That's the same way. It's beautiful. It's the justice of Allah that Iman is not, is not exclusive to any nation or any tribe. It's not exclusive to the Arabs or the Irish people, or the Indians, or the black people, or the white people, or the Australian people. It is for everybody. It's a gift that Allah Ta'ala has given for the benefit of everyone, at least for those who decide to take advantage of it. إِلَّا الَّذِينَ amanu. That's one part. But it's not the only part. Because there is another condition. Because your iman, your belief in the heart, your statement on the tongue, your action on the limbs, should be in accordance with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent. The Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا That this action on the limbs is the worship of Allah. It is your five salah. It is your zakah. It is your fasting in the month of Ramadan. It is your hajj. It is your actions that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is referring to when he says, when we, when we speak about the action on the limbs. وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ They do righteous deeds. They don't just sit on their iman. There's no, there's no medicine for your iman that you can take as an injection. If there was, I think I'd know where I'd put it. 
then the people who have to have that wouldn't be able to sit down anymore. <laughs> Your sitting days would be over. Because Iman is not just something you sit on. It's not just a hostage that you hold hostage in the masjid or the hostage that you hold in your heart. It has to grow. It has to be able to flourish. And it grows with the amil salihah. It grows with the good deeds. Obedience to Allah is how you increase your iman. Learning about the one who you believe in. Many of us will tell you that they believe in Allah, yet at the same time know very little about Him. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. We will always know a little about Allah. We won't know a lot about Him, but it's enough for us to know what He said about Himself. We don't even know that anymore. That's why so many of us, we, 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 we rejoice when people enter Islam, but so many of us are also leaving it. Due to this lack of knowledge, this lack of understanding of actually who is your Iman in? Who do you believe in? I believe in Allah. Oh, who is Allah? Ask my Imam. <laughs> what? How do, you, how do you justify that? If the non-Muslim comes to you and asks you who is Allah, well, you just ask the Imam. I'm, I'll send you to my Imam. You need to know who Allah is. You need to know what he said about himself. Because the more you know about him, the more you will love him and the more your iman will, will, will grow. I'm going to talk about the love of Allah tomorrow and how 10 ways, 10 very simple and practical ways to, to, to receive the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not only to receive his love, but to love him more. That's tomorrow inshallah. But tonight we're talking about iman because faith in the one who you love is true faith. If you know more about the movie stars, and my brother Muhammad is going to talk about the, the, the dunya just now, inshallah. If you know more about the movie stars, you should ask yourself, who is your faith really in? If you know more about the singers and about the athletes, and, and it doesn't matter, it, by the way, it doesn't matter if the singers are from North America or from Bollywood, really, it doesn't make a difference. You know, some people will say, well, we don't like... English music is haram, but Hindi is okay. <laughs> yeah, well, sorry. <laughs> that's, that's not the case. Ask yourself, who do you know the most about? Because to believe in Allah, it, it, Allah tells us, فَعْلَمْ To know, أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا هُوْ That there is no God worthy of worship except Him. So this idea that we can just have Iman and just sit quietly and not do anything about it. That's not Iman. That's a dying tree. So the good deeds and learning about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will increase your Iman. And to enjoin those people and other people to the truth. Meaning that you share this. Once you have it, once it's been planted and once it's allowed to grow, you actually share it with other people. We spoke about that last night. And that's why me and my brother travel all over the place doing this. My kids think I live at the airport. <laughs> because that's what we do. We run all over the place, all over the planet, globally, trying our best to share this because it is such a sweet taste. That nothing can compare to it. And not to say that the iman doesn't go down, and I'll get to that later, but you have to be ready and willing and able to share this and to support those who are sharing it. That has to be there. These things increase your Iman. To believe in Allah in, in your heart, a statement on the, on the tongue and action on the limbs, to do those righteous deeds that will increase your Iman. To obey Allah increases your Iman. But disobeying Him it decreases it. Disobeying Him decreases it. Missing the Salah. Doing those things like not caring too much about the Jum'ah. So I'll just come every now and then. Uh, this is Australia. These people are always bothering us. Why am I supposed to give? Uh, these kind of things lower the Iman. Keeping the Quran on the top shelf of your houses without reading it. That would lower your Iman as well. It doesn't belong there only. Put it on the top shelf of your heart and it won't collect dust on the top shelf of your home. Don't just dust it off in Ramadan. If you open the Quran in Ramadan and you have to do this, 
That's very shameful. We have to think to ourselves, I have to blow dust off of this because I never opened it in months, in years. These are the things that will increase your iman. And it's not just going to happen by magic. A lecture alone isn't going to do it. Me sitting here, if I sit here for three hours and you leave the same way that you've came in, then I haven't done my job. Iman is not a magical dust that I can just sprinkle over the crowd. It's not. I can just sprinkle it over my brother's head and he'll be okay. That's not the way it works. It's not an atom that you spray. It's not a drink that you say Bismillah and you skull. You skull. When you drink it down once without stopping. <laughs> they call it sculling here. There's no Iman shot that you can take. There's no Iman Panadol. Is that what it's called? Panadol? Okay. There, there's nothing like that. It has to be from you. It has to be yourself taking charge of your own Akhirah. Taking charge of your own life and of your own Iman. Nothing from nothing leaves nothing. If a million people do nothing, nothing gets done. Don't stagnate yourself. Yes, alhamdulillah, you have an easy, easier life here. There, you know, we're not starving here. We're not hungry. We're not struggling that much. We work every day, alhamdulillah. But don't just become like this, this stagnant, this stagnant water. You know, this water just sitting there. Waiting for the next speaker to come from wherever. Canada or America. Or to come and inject. And then we get all excited. It's Allahu Akbar. And once we leave from there, well... Oh well, we're back to normal again. Buy another 60 inch. So my, my so I can have the latest gadget. Maybe that'll make me happier. Buy the latest iPhone 5 or whatever. Buy the latest TV. Rent the latest DVD. I'll get happiness from that, I'm sure. And then a week later, you don't have it anymore. It's not making you happy again. So you go and you get a, a, the latest computer. That's it. The latest iPad. That's it. With the, with the retina display. Yes. Yes, honey, bring out the credit card. I want that. So you go and get that. And just bring that home. And then that three, four days later, you realize, oh, it's okay, but the Galaxy one is better. Oh, really? Wow, go buy that one. This is what people are doing because they don't have, they're missing something. Buy the latest car. Right? Buy the latest, the, the nicer new house. Yes, let's buy another house. Change wives. There you go. Astaghfirullah. <laughs> Sisters, can you imagine that? My husband's useless. Get rid of him. Maybe that'll increase my iman. If I marry a more religious brother, yes, that'll do it. Bigger beards. Yes, okay, good. Divorce her. She's not pretty enough anymore. Wow. <laughs> my, I need something else. That's, people are doing that all the time. <laughs> you may laugh at them. And you should laugh at them. People are doing that all the time because they're missing that. They're missing that Iman. They're missing what it takes to build your Iman. It's no secret. It is Surah al -Asr. And then when it's built, bilhaq. But then also, sabr, Because Allah knows you have to live here. Allah knows you have to stay here for a little bit, for a little while. So you're going to have to be patient. And anyone who does this work knows that very well. You're going to have to be patient. You're going to have to endure things you never thought you'd endure. You're going to have to, at least for us anyway, you're going to have to travel to countries you never thought there were Muslims in those countries. You, you, you'll end up in places. I remember I did a Quran recitation in a village in Kenya. <laughs> a village in Kenya in front of 3,000 people. There was a wedding there. One revert brother... A convert brother was marrying one revert sister. So the two villages came together and they made a huge wedding of it and it had th about 3,000 people and I ended up, by the permission of Allah, reading Quran there. I never thought in a million thousand hundred years that I would end up there doing that. And I'll tell you the truth, Wallahi, and I, and I don't say this word very lightly, Wallahi, it was the best wedding I've ever attended. 
It didn't have all the sparkles. It didn't have all the, you know, fancy whatever hotel streamers and all this. It was very, very simple with, um, I think, goat <laughs> and rice. And that was it. And the sisters were playing drums for the ladies, right, for the bride. And the brothers were sitting together and they brought me to recite Quran. But I had to be patient to get there. It was in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> Literally a village in a mud house. That's where I ate for the wedding, was in a mud house. A house made out of mud. Patience is important. It's not, it took me way out of my element. And I wish, and it's by the qadr of Allah, in any case, I can't complain about it, but I would have liked to have had a video to remember that. Because it was the best wedding I've ever been to in my whole life. Up until this point. But it took me completely out of my element. And if I wasn't patient, I wouldn't have been able to do that. Being patient with this message is important. Not every Aussie is going to take shahada. Not every person is going to listen to you when you talk to them. It's important to be patient. And Allah will test those who He loves. Muhammad Sallallahu was loved the most and he had the most tests. We know that. All of the prophets had tests. Yusuf salam, accused of crimes he didn't commit. Musa salam, chased by the pharaohs until... He had to cross the Red Sea and Allah helped him. Maryam salam wasn't a prophet, but she was accused of zina because of the miracle birth of Isa salam. Muhammad salam, accused of being a mad person, a kahin, a, a sorcerer, a magician, when he was no such thing. He was receiving revelation from the one who put the very sun in its place. Ibrahim salam, accused of destroying the idols, burnt in a fire that Allah made cool. Because of that Iman, because of that faith. Imam Ahmed whipped and, and, and killed eventually in prison, died because of his faith. And the list can go on and on among the Sahaba, among the Tabi'in, Tabi'in and the Ulama over the years up until now. People are suffering and dying for their faith, for their Iman. So don't just sit in Canberra because Allah gave you an amazing opportunity. That here you have a certain amount of freedom to practice your faith. No one's stopping you from praying in Australia. I know that because I've been here three times. No one ever stopped me from praying ever. You have halal meat everywhere. Your food is mashallah. <laughs> this is the house that Australia built right here. Is, I come here and gain weight and go home and lose it. <laughs> you have no shortages here, alhamdulillah. I can go to a fundraiser here and the people can raise $100,000 relatively easily. We raised $400,000 on Saturday in a matter of an hour. You have no shortage of potential here. Don't worry that, oh, this is a slow place. Why do you think it's slow? Give life back to it with the help of Allah. Allah will open the way for you. If a, if a completely blind person from Canada can learn how to read the Quran, you can do anything you want. <laughs> you can do anything you want with the permission of Allah. And this, you'll see your faith skyrocket. You'll see it. But be patient with it because there will come trials. But don't worry about that because the biggest trial is yet to come. Al-Qabr is going to be your trial. The Qabr will be your trial. And it will be greater than any trial that you will have. And Allah will not let you lie when you're in the Qabr. Here it's very easy to say, I believe in Allah. There, you won't be able to say that, if that's not the case. When you're questioned by those angels, and you're asked, who is your Lord? You can say Allah here, very easily. But there, we won't be able to lie. When we're asked, who is your Prophet? Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Here it's very easy to say Muhammad. Muhammad's my prophet. Don't you see the beard? <laughs> Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But there, beards mean nothing. That's it. There, all the truth will be told. When you're asked, what is your deen? Here, it's very easy. Don't you see this thing on my head? Don't you know I pray? The little small circle, if you get the light, 
right on it. You can, you can see it. It's a sujood thing. Don't you know that? There, in the qabr, that, if it's not done for the sake of Allah, will mean nothing. So start today, Canberra. Start now. Don't wait until, well, you know, wait till I get home. And get a really good movie ready to watch. Let me finish that. And then tomorrow morning is Jum'ah. Let me get a fresh start after the shower. And then I can go to the masjid. And then maybe I'll do something after that. And then life gets in the way until death gets in your way. Don't let life get in your way because death will definitely be in your way. Start now. Support what's going on now. Do something now because tomorrow's not yours. And tomorrow will always be tomorrow anyway until it becomes today. Jazakallah kulli khairan for coming out on a Thursday night. Tomorrow, I don't know where I'll be tomorrow. I'll be somewhere in Canberra tomorrow. And the brothers, I'm sure, will tell you, inshallah, for the Jum'ah and as well for the 10 things that will bring about the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. يقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم وذلك ما عندي وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد سلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته